We need the system to be speed. Not every application needs it, but lots of applications need it. And you can get speed by sharding, but if you have certain patterns of transactions, even sharding doesn't help very much. So what you want to do is have sharding, but also have really fast single shards. So the question is, could we handle hundreds of thousands of transactions even in a single shard? And could we reach that latency, the time to finality, of just seconds? Very fast. This is the question. Latency here is the time until you absolutely 100% know you're right. OK. So let's talk then about the Hedera hash graph performance. We have been doing performance testing. And we've been doing performance testing on um, nodes on Amazon, AWS, spread around the world on five continents. And we've been doing it with the number of nodes equaling the number of governor, governing members that we are going to have. And we have done lots of different, and different numbers of nodes as well. We've done lots of stuff. If you want to know all the details, look at our website and get the paper that describes it all. If you want to know about the formal proofs, look at our website and get the paper that describes it all. If you want to know the algorithm, look at the website that has the paper that describes it all. Oh, and you may be curious about our governance. Guess where that is? Hashgraph.com. You look at the website, you find that. So what does the performance look like? Well, what does it need to be? You know, if you're a major credit card, Global, around the world credit card, how fast are they? Well, a typical one might run at 2,000 transactions a second on average, with peaks up to over 50,000. So this is the kind of speed we're talking about for a really major international system, is a couple thousand a second, maybe peaking up to over 50,000. And the published requirements from some of these public credit cards are the merchant must, or the system must approve within seven seconds. You swipe your card in the store and you have to know the answer within seven seconds. And the answer is usually, please reinsert your card. The chip didn't work. I'm probably the only person who ever has that problem. So what did we do? 50,000. We asked it to do 50,000 on a network spread around the world. Not 50,000 peak, but average, continually, continually doing 50,000 transactions per second, spread around the world into five continents in eight regions, from Tokyo to Canada, from Australia to Frankfurt, Germany, from Sao Paulo in South America up to Seoul, South Korea, and both coasts of the United States, which might have been eight. If it wasn't eight, I forgot one. Those eight. And we were getting good speed. If we asked it to do 50,000 per second, we were getting 2.9 seconds of latency. So in a couple of seconds, you have your answer. Not a confirmation, a 100% sure, guaranteed, I know I have the consensus, and I know everyone else has the same consensus, guaranteed. That's what we were getting. Thank you. So I'm happy with that. That's good. That means we can handle even the peak of a major credit card system. Uh, but just for fun, we asked it to do twice that, 100,000 a second. And of course, there's always these trade-offs. Read the paper. It has all the trade-offs and all the curves and all the numbers. But there's always trade-offs. If you want to do a lot, it starts to slow down your consensus. And it slowed down our consensus by less than half a second. <laughs> we actually went up to 3.3 seconds with 100,000 transactions per second. This is the kind of speed we're talking about. And this is spread around the world. What if you were willing to settle for a mere continent? What if we were willing to settle for merely across the United States, over 2,000 miles? Converted to kilometers, that's a bunch. Actually, it's 3,000. So over 3,000 kilometers going across the country. And we want to have the same kind of consensus latency that you're seeing here. So just for fun, let me show you that ex example. What happens when you're in one continent, and we want the same latency to time to finality to absolutely guarantee knowing it? Does it run faster than 50,000? Well, it does run a little bit faster. 250,000. So this, thank you, this is running at a quarter million transactions per second. And look at that latency. It's still just three seconds. Now, remember, we have all sorts of caveats. This is, um, anyway. Read the paper for all the caveats. I'll, I'll say them all again at the end. But these are preliminary results. I think we can make it faster in some ways. In some cases, it'll be slower. And in some other cases, it'll be faster. And in some other cases, it'll be slower. But these are the numbers we're getting. 
But you know, you just have to try it. That's what a continent looks like. What does one region look like? Like the east coast of the United States? You just got to try it and see what it says. And what it says, in that case, is 500,000. And it's three and a half seconds latency. That's kind of cool. So that's just one region, though. Uh, we're not going to run a shard in one region because I don't trust it. It's all about trust. But here's the bottom line. It is not that these numbers mean anything. There are lots of trade-offs. If you use more people, it becomes slower. But if we were to tune it, it would become faster. And if you spread it over a bigger region, it becomes slower. But if you spread it over a smaller region, it becomes faster. And there's all of these things. We need to talk about them. You, they're in the paper. And uh, we will be giving more results in the future. But you know what? If you were just to look at the math, you would think this is an algorithm that really ought to run at about the limits of what the laws of mathematics allow and what the internet allows for an ABFT system. Because all we're doing is the bare minimum of spreading out the transactions with their timestamps and signatures to begin with, plus a tiny bit of information, two hashes, actually two compressed hashes that come down to a couple bytes, just a little tiny bit of extra information. That's the only bandwidth we use. And then the consensus part of it you get for free. That's the, with how the hash graph works. You use no bandwidth at all for the, hash, for the consensus part of it. You just send out the bare minimum of the transactions themselves with their signatures and, and their uh, timestamps. And then you add a little tiny bit for two hashes. That gives you a hash graph. It gives you a history so you know how we talk to each other. And then you get consensus for free. No communication at all. You look at that, and mathematically you say, you know, it ought to run about as fast as any ABFT ever system could. And do remember, this is one shard. OK. But so you know what that means. That means that for many applications, you're going to get n times faster within shards. For some applications, you'll get one time faster within shards. For most applications, you'll be somewhere in between. So you can be faster in most applications with sharding. But a single shard is this fast. You'd expect it to be about the limits of mathematics, and it kind of looks like that. Who knows? That's what, the pro that's what we're seeing right now. It's early days. But what about signatures? We want to have digital signatures on all of our transactions. When Alice wants to move from her, wallet or from her account to Bob's account, she has to digitally sign it. Can we verify that many digital signatures? Now, do understand there's digital signatures involved in the consensus itself. We were doing verification. When you see these numbers on the screen, these are from when we had very strong encryption, very strong digital signatures being verified, very strong hashes for the consensus part of this. But for the transaction part of this, for actually verifying signatures on each transaction, how much time is that going to take? And we thought, that's going to be very slow on a typical computer. We don't want a supercomputer. We want a typical computer, except maybe we could use the graphics card. And we weren't able to find any uh, libraries that would do that, but we uh, were able to get a library written to do that, and we were able to test it, and we were able to see and answer the question, can we verify hundreds of thousands of digital signatures per second if you use the graphics card, one graphics card, on the computer? And when we tested it, what we discovered is that the answer is no. You, the speed is not hundreds of thousands. It's a million. <laughs> OK. This is what we're talking about. Now, again, if you have a smaller graphics card, it'll be slower. If you had a bigger graphics card, it'd be bigger. But it's a single graphics card. It's very fast. This is faster than we can even do consensus in a single shard. So um, basically, it looks like it's fast enough. I mean, that's really what the bottom line is. It looks like it's fast enough.